Thank you guys all for attending today's session. Um, just a couple reminders. Um, as usual, just if you can please leave your microphones and your videos off during presentation, um, it you know decreases the distraction. Also, if you have questions, please type them in the chat box and I will relay them to our presenter as we go along. And then once more at the end of today's presentation, we will send out a survey. So if you guys could all take a couple minutes just to um, fill that out and give us any feedback and comments. Um, that would be great. We really take those seriously as um, we continue to provide these trainings and topics for everybody. So with that, I will turn it over to Julie and she is going to be talking today about work um, wellness and avoiding burnout and staying healthy. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I so appreciate um, everybody joining us today and I very much appreciate the invite to share on education, health, wellness, life, balance, all of the above. Um, I kind of say I've been ranting on this for about 11 years, but the last year and a half, it's very much become to the front line that we really do need to take time to focus on how to stay healthy. What can we do to stay healthy? So thank you for inviting me. I have to say, first of all, I've already learned something new um, that I didn't even know this group existed. So Money Follows the Person Housing Program. Thank you for educating me on what this is. I feel like I need to know this exists um, in my own community as a nurse practitioner and working with people in different housing situations and coming out of um, assisted living and coming out of nursing homes. So I feel grateful that I even know this pro program exists now today. So thank you for that. Um, I am Julie Lansedel. I'm a family nurse practitioner here in Bismarck. Um, previously, I worked in the emergency medicine at St. Alexis in the ER for 10 years. I've been a nurse for almost 25 years, a nurse practitioner for 15 and um, love emergencies, medicine, all that. But about 2010, I um, had a little path of where I wasn't feeling the best and I was introduced to some wellness options. And the crazy part is that they don't educate us on any of this stuff in nurse practitioner world or medical world. We just learn how to prescribe. And I was the queen of prescribing narcotics at the emergency room because that it was kind of the job that we were, you know, were to do. Um, I decided after a couple of years of improving my health and understanding a bit more about foods and exercise and things like that, that I really felt the power or the, the call to educate people how to empower their health. Um, if someone's looking for a prescription on something, there's a lot of nurse practitioners and providers to do that, but there's not a lot of people out there who um, are in a platform to educate on how to be healthy and complement medicine or those who want to avoid being on medicine. So I opened Step Wellness in 2014, and that is what I do. So I educate a lot on weight loss, pain management, decreasing inflammation. Um, I went to University of Mary. I was in the, in the Air Force and the National Guard. I just recently actually am in the process of becoming a certified Les Mills body pump instructor. I've wanted to do this for years, but honestly, the last year drove me to wanting to be more focused on that and having control to help my clients more. So that in this next, in June this month, I should be certified. So um, it's amazing the things that have happened the last year. A lot of us kind of went for our dreams that we've had on the back burner forever. So you're never too old to go for your dreams, I say. So a little bit more about what I do before I kind of get into it. I do a lot with just education on custom health solutions. People just not knowing that they have options to be healthy. How do we do that? I do a lot of you know, education, lots of education. I do run weight loss classes um, in person before, a lot of it virtually now, hoping to go back into in person. I also focus a lot on food sensitivity testing, vitamin D testing, et cetera, things like that. Um, just re understanding how the body reacts to food and how best to be healthy. Um, I also love doing sports physicals and educating our, our young population, very passionate on that. So when sports physical season comes around, if you wanna think of me, that would be fabulous in there, but this is some of the other things that I do along with it. Also, if we run out of time at the end, I do offer free consults. Um, so you're, anyone on this call is welcome to you know, message me and we can do a free consult. The reason I do that is because most people don't even know that there are options to wellness. Just like I did not know when I went to nurse practitioner school, I have another 10 years of education 
on how to be well after my nurse practitioner degree. So I love to meet with people, look at their goals and just see ones, what are you looking for? And is there some wellness options that I can help with? Um, so if anyone's interested in that, please let me know. This is my family. And I know today we're talking a lot about stress, work, workplace, home, just the chaos that has happened to us the last year and a half and really where we're at now. I have to say, um, I can totally relate to anybody who's had a very hectic year. Um, we all have had one, some more than others, and how the compound of that can greatly take its toll. Um, I was one of the blessed people last year who had a daughter getting married in 2020. Um, her wedding was scheduled the first weekend that COVID hit, March 21st of 2020. Needless to say, we had to cancel a wedding three days before the wedding happened, 250 guests, rescheduled, had to change another date, rescheduled a third date, had to move states, and moved it from Minneapolis to Fargo, North Dakota. And the day of the wedding, one of our sons was diagnosed with COVID. So I, let me tell you, the uh, acquiring this picture off in a prairie where our son actually couldn't be at the wedding, but I wanted this family picture was no easy feat of last year. Um, so I literally have I'm thankful for the wellness that I know about that has helped my mental health and within our family because we had a very stressful year just like a lot of people did last year. And so I can totally relate to the overwhelmingness um, of what has been happening. And I know I'm definitely not alone in that at all. I've heard story upon story. So God bless you if you had any type of big event last year that because that was a feat in itself just trying to have a social event last year. But really talking about health, healthy community, healthy self, how do we live life vibrantly? These couple slides are really kind of what we've dealt with the last year. And if you're sick of hearing this, cover your eyes for a bit. But the reality is we can't forget what we've gone through in the last year and a half. Because what I'm seeing now is kind of the, what's happened afterwards. So this was the last year to have all of these things, staying away from people. Now we're working from home. All, most of you guys are you know, on a Zoom. I, I heard that these used to be in person. Now we're via Zoom. Makes a big difference. Every, you know, talk about essential. These are my three children. My two boys were actually in nursing school during COVID. Here, one just graduated this past month. But, you know, letting, we are all essential in life. <laughs> but it's just crazy how we were, you know, with our jobs and everything happening. And all of that has led us to this. We are just tired. Everybody is tired because we've all had these different things happening. And yet, our responsibilities in life don't go away just because we are overwhelmed with life. And actually our responsibilities seem more overwhelming because we are so overwhelmed with life. And all of this has led to this. And this is exactly what I am seeing in my office. And so that's why when um, Kylie asked me to speak on burnout, because that's where the whole world is at. For all the things that have happened, um, I said, even the people who dealt with 2020 pretty good, you know, some came through like troopers and I'm like, how did they do that? But it's hitting them now. And so this is what we are dealing with. People are tired, they're exhausted, they're burnt out, they're, you know, divorce is up, alcoholism is up, suicide rates are up, everything is up. People are, um, go to social media, the, the temperament is up. Everything seems just so volatile and is how do you kind of make it through the world when all this is happening in a situation that really none of us had control over and we all have done our best and just know that everybody in the world is doing their best with what they can with what we've been had to deal with but how do we now move forward with that and do the best we can and take care of ourselves from there so stress and the lack of physical activity are top health issues for workers, say companies. Now, this is back from 2016. I, some of these slides that I had was all before, like these last two years. The thing is, it's more relevant now than ever. Lifestyle, lifestyle our lifestyle has drastically changed in the last year. So we're actually working more hours. We may not actually be physically at work. And I'm, I can speak for my husband. I won't say where he works, but when he used to go to work and then he'd come home at the end of the day, it seemed like it ended there. He's been working from home now since March of 2020. He never stops working because 
the phone is always there and the laptop's always there. And it's become exhausting to the point where my myself and my kids are like, dad's still working and it's nine o'clock. So because that the, the work place has shifted, it's now like our kitchen table for some people. We're working more, we're not getting a break. We're having more physical inactivity. Part is because we couldn't go to gyms or maybe you don't want to go to the gym or you don't belong to a gym, but sometimes we're just so tired. <laughs> you know how they say that you need, if you exercise, you'll feel better, but you eat, you have more energy, but you need energy to exercise as well because we have this burnout and we're just exhausted that you just don't have the desire to even do anything. Plus we're sitting more. Um, we're eating out more often. Now, this was probably more last year, but the thing is, I, I still think people are eating out more, whether it being delivery is coming to our home. We're going out now that we actually can go out to restaurants. And for those of us, depending, I think everybody here is in North Dakota, how I understand, but you know, in other areas that I, I speak with and do education, there's still not things are open. So we're eating out more often, whether it be delivered to our home or going to a restaurant. We are getting fewer hours of sleep because we're stressed. Stress gives us less hours of sleep. Right now, actually, I say we get less hours just because the sun is up a little bit longer. And in, in North Dakota, you know, the summer is like this big. So we have to fit everything we can into this little bit of time. So we're out on the river, we're doing everything till the sun goes down and we're just not getting enough sleep. These are some of the things over the year and these really haven't gone away depending where you live. Homeschooling, quarantine, masks, vaccines, the discussion, 2020, all of that has changed our lifestyle. I feel like our life has changed just like it did back in 9-11. We're going to have a new lifestyle and how are we going to live with that? One of the big things, did you know that sitting is the new smoking? There are studies out now saying that the amount of sitting that we do is actually as detrimental to smoking. Now, I'm not saying to take up smoking by no means, but the thing is we are so sedentary and we've always been sedentary, but now we're sitting at a desk. Here I am at a desk. I'm not walking even in front of a room when I used to present to people. I'm not walking even in front of the room. I'm sitting at a computer. This is all major things. We're socializing less. The thing is we're on our phones more by forcing. We used to tell people to stay off their phone, all these things, got the computer. And now we have to run our worlds by our phone because that's the way the world has gone, it's more social. We are running businesses, entities by our phones. The thing is, we're also not getting to see people. Who remembers the days back when we used to, um, you know, look over the barricade, the thing, I would say barricade, but look over the thing and say morning to people. We miss our coworkers. We miss people being at events. We miss seeing each other at the water cooler, things like that. All of this takes its toll on us and people are lonely. I, talk, I work a lot with Val Myers, who owns the Kids Therapy Center, who does a lot of studying on um, children's health, mental health, um, suicide, everything. And this relates to adults, too. This is not just for children. But the number one thing that she is finding in her clinic is people are lonely. We're lonely. We miss each other. We miss people. So we, you know, one thing is make, reach out to people, you know, who needs a, I always say a virtual hug, who needs a text today? I think we did really good at that last year a little bit, but we're getting a little bit doing that less because I think we're all tired. We're all exhausted. So these things all make a big difference. You guys, there is no health without mental health. This, and maybe that's one good thing that has come out of this past year. I mean, the things that have come out good is if people are more focused on their, their health overall, but mental health has come to the front line. Again, at the Kids Therapy Center, they've hired more therapists and more therapists, and they're still booked out until August. Um, and this is for all, you know, all locations because people are seeking help and you should be seeking help just because we need to talk to somebody about how do we cope with our life does not, is not a weakness, that is a strength, that if you take the time and you take the energy to reach out to someone, that is, that is a good thing to do. So emotional symptoms of stress, these are some of the symptoms of stress that people might be noticing, easily agitated, frustrated and moody. I, I, I kind of said, I did, alluded to it already, all you do is go on social media. It, it's a, I mean, I know one of the people, uh, chiropractors that I work along with, he says, stay off of social media. It is a cesspool of negativity. 
um, that we just get sucked in, but you're seeing that agitation very much on social platforms, people feeling overwhelmed. What used to be, you know, where you can juggle a couple of things, you, you've got kids, you've got work, you've got this, all of a sudden that seems such a heavy burden to be able to do all those things. Um, we can't stay relaxed anymore. Our self-esteem is going down. Part of it may be, again, because we're on social media looking at all these pictures of things and comparing what's happening, when reality is, remember, social media is only what's put on there is only what's allowed to be put on by that person. You only see what someone wants you to see. Again, people are feeling lonely, worthless, antisocial. This is where our society is. Um, some symptoms that people feel of stress, low energy, headaches, upset stomach, you know, constipation, diarrhea aches and pains, weight gain, I can tell you, I see a large amount of these things in my office. And why I love what I do is because for low energy, for headaches, any of these, you know, you can, you can go to a medical clinic where I used to work and be, you know, we can do run some lab tests, et cetera. And everything's probably going to be normal. Because, you know, low energy may not show up as anything abnormal in a, in a blood test. But the thing is, you are still feeling it. And I think that's what's sometimes frustrating to people is like you go to the clinic and I, I did this last year too. And I was just sure that something's wrong with me. My labs have to be totally out of whack. And nope, you're the healthiest person here in the clinic that your labs are all good. But why am I so exhausted? Why am I so tired? Why, you know, why am I gaining weight? Why is my belly getting bigger? Why is all, why can't I sleep? All these things are symptoms of stress which then kind of this gets into our brain more the cognitive part, you know, the racing thoughts, not being able to sleep, that constant, I always call it squirrels running around in my brain. So if any of you guys have squirrels, you can <laughs> just give me a thumbs up out there. But I say my, you know, my squirrels are running around faster and faster. Um, and I got multiple in there because we just, we're just so, our thoughts just never stop, which then leads to problems of, you know, difficulty concentrating and focus. For some people can make poor judgment. I know I um, a couple of weeks ago, I had some stressful situation. I said to one of my nurse practitioner friends, I said, do not like, let me make any major decisions or let me sign any contracts right now because I was having a very stressful time. And so all of this happening, we, we procrastinate on things. And bottom line is what the, at the bottom left, we're overwhelmed. We become overwhelmed by all of these things. Some of the top causes of stress in the United States, job pressure, co-worker tension, bosses, work overload, all of this, money, health, you can, and, and I think those top three have definitely, you know, arisen even higher than that, but money, people have lost their jobs, people have been furloughed, you know, all the things happening, um, health. With, you know, having a health crisis, something terminal, all of those definitely can take its toll. But just the fact that we don't feel good right now from burnout also is it leads to big stress. Um, I have to say this morning, I was a little bit behind on getting my PowerPoint done this morning because I had someone call me for an hour and a half this morning on a phone about a relationship because of money because of increased alcohol and gambling in the marriage. And they were very stressed out. And it just, and this, so I had to take that phone call um, and put this on the hold for a second because this is what's happening. And this person was extremely overwhelmed on what they're going to do. And they're in a very much of a crisis mode. So all of these things are you know, top causes of stress in the United States. Some statistics are that the percentage of people who regularly experience physical symptoms caused by stress are 77%. And again, it doesn't, and I know, like I said, I, 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 I have people come to me that I went to the clinic and I got my blood tested and everything's normal. So I just want to assure you that if just because your blood work is normal doesn't mean what you're experiencing is not a real thing. I want you to know that it is a real thing. 73% um, of people have experienced psychological symptoms. 33% are living with extreme stress. And I will say that this has increased this past year um, toward the bottom cited money and work as the leading cause of stress. 76%, 48% um, of the people report lying awake at night due to stress. And then 48% here percent say stress has a negative impact on their personal and professional life. 
I'm going to go down here a little bit. 54% of people say stress has caused them to fight with people close to them. I can say over the last year, there's been a lot of relationships, family and friend relationships have taken drastic turns because of the increased stress our society has been on. And $300 billion are spent annually from, by employers in stress-related health care and missed work. What I can say is the group that you work with, I applaud you for sharing and offering in educational segments like this to help people because it's never been more important for employers to just acknowledge that stress is an issue and wellness is something that will help keep their employees in place and at work, et cetera. So you, you can't almost ignore it anymore. So just understand that wellness is not the absence of illness. I think, and you know, and I probably thought the same back, like what exactly does wellness mean? And that's actually why I offer free wellness consults because people don't even know what it is because they might say, well, I'm not sick everything's okay when I go to the doctor, things like that, but that's not what wellness is. Wellness is a state of health that's closely associated with your lifestyle. That's the word. Each person has a responsibility to provide for such health essentials as good nutrition, proper weight control, exercise, risk factors such as smoking, alcohol, and drug abuse. These things all play a role in wellness. I wish I had one magic pill to give you today to help with your work burnout or your life burnout and hell exhaustion. And unfortunately, there's not. I know when I work in the ER, people just wanted this magic pill and there is no magic pill, but there are things that we can do to help improve the stress that we are under. And so why is it important? This is more of a visual here. You know, different choices lead to different results in life. These people are the same age on the left, same age on the right. And we know people like that. And as the older we get, I'm going back to, you know, class reunions. I'm going back to things. And we know there is a difference in choices. We can definitely see it physically. But the thing is, sometimes we can't see it when it's internally. It's much easier to see the guy on the left, the two guys there, the difference in them. But when you're physically fatigued, exhausted, internally drained, you just like, I can't do this anymore. The sad part is no one can see that inside of you. You can feel it. It can be very pretty pictured on the outside, but we're dying on the inside. And so this comes from Dr. John Kelly, who's the president of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, that systemically treating disease without assessing the patient's lifestyle or offering guidance on how to change is irresponsible and bordering on neglect. And I have to tell you, I mean, I, you know, even 10 years ago, this is not what was being said. I mean, when I kind of took a path into a wellness practice for myself, it was like people eye rolled at me, like, what are you going to do with wellness? And the reality is moving forward, it's amazing how it's shifting that, you know, we can prescribe all the things we want in the world and prescriptions save lives. Nowhere am I, I mean, prescriptions save lives, medicine save lives, but your one visit to the doctor a year or your nurse practitioner a year for that, that yearly exam is not going to make you well. That's not the answer. It's really those 364 days you, that you're spending in your lifestyle between those visits. That's where the important part is. So this just was a study that just said that, you know, with, with, um, with twins, that 20 to 30 percent of individuals lifespan is related to genetics, while the rest is due to individual behaviors and, you know, life factors, lifestyle, nutrition, et cetera. So this is very important in our longevity, but also how we feel on a daily basis. So some of the things that I'm going to work on focusing today, and these are things that I really focus on all the time, is food, exercise, supplementation, and stress. Number one is let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. The power of food is unbelievable. One is how it makes you feel, but one is a community. Food is community. We go out to eat together. Now there's farmer's markets. It's basically food is how we communicate. It's our social network. But when we as individuals start making healthier lifestyle choices, we do recognize how personal health can make an impact on others. If, one, if there's one thing I want to say is don't, don't let people, I hate to use the word bully, but I, I kind of feel with alcohol, sometimes there's just pressure to drink. 
and you're almost bullied amongst adults. And I tell my college kids, this is no different when you're an adult, when you're old like me, that the same thing happens. Stick up for yourself in your health. Making a healthy change in your family will absolutely impact your, your own health and your family's health because I've seen it with my own children over the past 10 years. Um, because at some point your kids are gonna leave you and you want them as empowered as you can to go out into their community at some point in life. These are just some studies, I'm not gonna go in depth with them, but studies that show that foods can heal us physically. So physically food makes a big difference on us. Foods can heal us emotionally. This is ta a study talking about depressive and anxiety disorders. And so, I mean, if, and if you're, you can take screenshots of these, anything you want to do is absolutely fine to you know, look these up. But there's been a, lots of information on how food makes us feel different. Foods can heal us spiritually. Having a good positive body image, mindful eating in college. You know, and while this was this had to do with college women, and I have to say, I, like I said, I, my son's being in college, um, them understanding a little bit more about food or me promoting wellness a bit um, has helped them because they have said they have they have a, a more understanding grasp of how to be healthy. It doesn't mean that things are perfect. That's not what I mean, but it's just you know on a day by day making some better choices. Some of the health effects also of just be of overweight and obesity. And I, I didn't, I took out the slides of a bunch of statistics because I want to get to the, the meat and potatoes of what we can do on a daily basis. Um, but it's, I don't think it's a secret that our society has an obesity problem. And that has been increasing this past year because I see the people coming to me because they have no energy for all the reasons we already discussed. But some of the effects are, you know, just body of pain, blood pressure, cholesterol, type two diabetes, mental illness, just quality of life, just not feeling physically like they can go out and do what they want to do. Um, sleep apnea. Sleep is a big thing. And obesity is a, can a, make sleep apnea occur or make it worse. Um, you know, gallbladder disease, that's another one that's up. I mean, you know, just because we're not eating the greatest, but all of this stuff deals with obesity and inflammation in the body. And a lot of times when I say obesity, I don't even, or overweight, I don't necessarily mean the scale even. Internal inflammation will make a huge impact on your health in a negative way. And that is something that I do work on a lot um, in my office. If this is what your stomach looks like, we need to talk. None of this on the screen right now is helping with any of the empowerment or feeling better or stress. Now, is this what we crave when we're stressed? Yes, it is. No one ever said, I'm super stressed. I'm going to go have some broccoli for dinner. That is not what happens. I totally understand that. But if this is where you're at, we do have to make a change. Talking a little bit about healthy eating. I am very passionate on healthy eating. I run TLS low glycemic lifestyle classes, four week classes, um, and I educate on how to eat, how to read labels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I know I don't have time to go through label reading today, but if anybody's ever interested in a class on that, I will absolutely offer that because I the power of understanding how to read a label in a grocery store is a superpower. That is a great thing. But low glycemic impact eating is that we're eating foods. For one thing, you have to eat. We're going to eat proteins, vegetables, fruits, good fats. The whole thing is we want to keep our blood sugar stable. When our blood sugar is not stable, we have no energy. We are crabby. We can't sleep. All the things, these things happen, and that's where body fat or belly fat is stored. If low glycemic impact eating might, you might have heard it like for, that's how diabetics eat. You know, we're keeping a steady blood sugar. Don't wait until you have diabetes to eat low glycemic. We should be eating like this now to prevent all the health effects that could happen of unhealthy eating. Plus it'll keep us healthier overall. So focus a lot on, again, eating foods, eating whole foods, low sugars. I focus a lot on how you, you know, how do you folk, how do you keep lowest sugar, amount of sugar in your in your diet and what sugars are the best and the things that it helps for all of these you know it, your energy burns fat blood sugar levels anti-inflammatory brings down the inflammation you can absolutely google just low glycemic impact eating i'll have my website on at the end here if you want something more direct so you don't have to search so hard on what foods would be the best to eat and let's go back here. This is just kind of a visual 
because I like visuals. So you can like, when I, when you're out eating, I want you just know you want to keep your blood sugar stable. You want to keep it in that blue area, keep that blood sugar stable. That's the fat burning zone. That's where you have energy. The thing is you have to eat for this to happen. And so low glycemic impact foods will keep you in that blue zone. If you have high glycemic foods, you know, there's that cupcake, there's that diet Mountain Dew, things like that. You're going to, um, your blood sugar is going to spike. You get a lot of energy, but then you crash and you hit down in that five zone. That's where your energy is down. You're fatigued. Um, that's where people get crabbier. So you have that crabby effect, but that's also where body fat is stored. So generally the midsection, I'm pointing to my midsection, that's generally where it's stored. Um, also, if people just aren't eating, your body goes into starvation mode and it holds on to body fat. And so people will say, I hardly ever eat. Why am I gaining weight? Or why is my belly so big? That's because your body's in starvation mode. It's going to hold on to that food and it's going to make it into fat, just like a hibernating bear. We're going to store it into fat. So if you keep in those, you know, the one, two, three, six, and seven, that's where you want to do. The thing is, though, we have to eat. In my education with people and working with thousands of people, most of the people, I mean, yes, we do make some unhealthy choices, but most of the people are not eating five, 6,000 calories a day. Like we see on, um, I always watch the show, uh, oh shoot, um, My 600 Pound Life, fascinated with that show. Most of the people I see locally are not eating 6,000 calories a day. What they're doing is they're not eating at all, or they're eating once or twice a day. And they think that, well, because I'm hardly eating, I should be losing weight. And actually, I like to... My, I'm a very much on a visual. Imagine a fire pit and you've got, you know, the wood sticks in there. If you want to keep that fire pit going while you're roasting some marshmallows, you have to put a, a, a brick in there or a piece of wood in there to keep that fire going. That's your metabolism. You eat so that fire keeps going. If you walk away from the fire pit for a couple hours, it, you know, it dies. You have to probably actually reignite it. You just can't, you know, kick it and it's going to start up again. Same with your metabolism, it's gonna stall. So you wanna keep that fire burning. So eating three meals, you know, five times a day, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. And eating, uh, one thing you can look at then is I always say like when you're eating, look at it, think of this, protein and fiber at every meal makes losing weight or losing fat, no big deal. Protein and fiber will help you keep that blood sugar stable that whole time. If you just look at that. So when you're eating, look, do I have some protein? Do I have some fiber? When I work at the hospital and I go down to the cafeteria, because we know all cafeterias are super healthy with food, not. <laughs> so, you know, protein is their fiber. And that's a good place to start. Because if you have that protein and fiber, it's going to make it much easier to keep that glycemic impact down. Here's a list of foods, just kind of, you know, visually foods that eliminate inflammation on the left side. So things such as nuts, avocados, spinach, cherries, olive oil, fruits, vegetables, pineapple, turmeric, onions, ginger. Stay away from the ones on the right hand side. And the thing is, it's so hard for us to stay away from them because people are like, well, sugar tastes good. Well, fried food tastes good. Sugar is always going to taste good. It's not good for us though. And if you have a hard time eliminating some of those things, such as dairy, such as sometimes eggs, as gluten, that's why I actually do food sensitivity testing because it's way easier for someone to eliminate dairy if the test that I have of the food sensitivity says you are way off the charts with dairy and that inflammation is detrimental to what you're trying to do. So staying away from those ones on the right hand side. Here's a, another list of kind of stress-inducing foods, and they're, very, they're, they're similar. Stay away from sugar, table salt, processed foods, junk food, alcohol, and coffee. And then the ones on the right, you know, having vegetables, um, avocados, berries, tomatoes, nuts, and plant protein. When it comes to processed or packaged foods, you know, they have an expiration date on them, of course. The thing is, the longer the expiration date is on a processed food, the shorter your expiration date is if you are eating it. Just remember that. Fruits and vegetables have a very short expiration date, which then extends your expiration date. So just kind of remember that when you're looking at foods that you're going to be eating. 
Here is another, let's see what else here. Come on back here, fat burning foods. Here's a list of fat burning foods too. Some of the top ones in there being chili peppers, mustard, ginger, berries, garlic, lemons, vinegar, cabbage, cinnamon's a great one as well. Apple cider vinegar, green tea, um, you're always going to go, you know, these are great ones if you're looking for fat burning. These are all good options. Here's up just an image of good fiber rich foods. The thing is these days with the internet, it's easier, easy to search list, you know, give me a top of fiber rich foods. Give me the top, you know, foods of protein. You can look these up. But here's some great fiber rich foods as well. We do not get enough fiber in our diet. We need at least 25 to 30 grams per day. The average person gets about 10. And there's, we just need to increase our fiber in our diet and vegetables have fiber. And so that, you know, having an apple, having a carrot and having some beans for dinner will be fabulous. Great fiber rich. Make sure you get your water in as well. We want at least 64 ounces of water per day. Dehydration is a big thing. And I can tell you right now, because, you know, it, the first week of June felt like the first week of August here in Bismarck. And so everybody is a bit more dehydrated. We need to keep that hydration in. So making a focus on hydration. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much, but I can just tell you that I don't know that excessive alcohol is ever going to be a good thing. I also know that when people are fatigued, tired, overwhelmed, alcohol is, is, is not going to be the best. One at the top there, it just talks about alcohol is empty calories. So if you're looking to actually lose weight, or you know, decrease on body fat, alcohol messes with our hormones, it increases our appetite, it makes us eat more junk food, things like that. Um, but also, which is like I said, that's one of my calls this morning for an hour and a half had to do with a wife regarding alcohol in her family with her husband and all these other things that have happened this past year. And so just knowing that alcohol, you know, is not going to be the best, but if you're going to have some, you know, if you're going to have one drink, the bottom there are going to be better options. Cause that's one thing I do talk about in classes is how do I get, um, if I'm going to have a drink, what are the best ones to keep my blood sugar stable? Some big, big ones, you know, straight liquor is going to be the best. I know I, if you told me I was going to say this 20 years ago, I'd have told you you're crazy. Um, but really straight liquor is the best, not adding any sodas in there. Beers really add on um, weight, especially in the belly area. Um, tequila is actually one of the most low glycemic alcohols that you can have. Have a little tequila on the, on the rocks there with a lime and a salt. Um, never add juices or soda or things like that. Keep it with no, sh no sugar added because that will make a big difference in there too. So, so if you're going out with some friends, have a shot of tequila. Just one though, because too many of that is not good either. And then moving into, so the food is so powerful. Food is, and they always, a frequent thing I say is abs are not made in the kitchen. You know, we do say that a lot. The thing is fitness is, has so much more to do or exercise than just physical wise. The mental health of exercise this past year has been so powerful and I wish more people would do it, which is one of the reasons, again, I went on to become a Les Mills certified body pump instructor because of the mental health effects that exercise has. But if there, did you know that there is a prescription that is the cure for heart disease, diabetes, cognitive decline, and depression? Physical fitness is the ability to function effectively throughout your workday, perform your usual activities, and still have enough energy left over to handle any extra stressors that way may arise. That sounds pretty much what we're all dealing with. That's work burnout. That's day burnout. That's life burnout. Exercise is going to help you manage that. I know when I've gone, you know, and worked out those last year, I can't tell you how many times I cried while I was working out because it was such a, a stress reliever. And I learned that in my certification training with um, Les Mills that that is exercise has as much to do with mental health as it has to do with physical health. So I, it's just, it's very important having the exercise in our lifestyle. So exercise of any kind is going to be beneficial for managing anxiety, stress, and helping us through the day. Any kind of exercise is going to be beneficial. Um, benefits are going to be muscle mass. And the thing is we want to keep our muscle we don't want to lose our muscle. We want to lose body fat. I work with a, a naturopath, Dr. Deidre Mason, and her um, little tangent here, but her 
focus in life is that she wants to be able to get off the toilet by herself at the age of 99. And you need muscle mass like that. So you have to do some weightlifting or strength training. I also work with um, the Edgewood Village with one of their um, providers up there. And they said the number one reason people have to go from an assisted living to a nursing home is because they cannot get off the toilet by themselves. What a correlation. When I heard that, I'm like, oh my God. So long-term to keep yourself out of a nursing home if your overall healthy has to do really with your muscle retention and having muscle so that we can toilet ourselves as we get older, because that is the number one reason people end up in a nursing home is because they cannot go to the bathroom by themselves. So we wanna keep that muscle mass. It also helps our cardiovascular, limb system, immune and circulatory health, reduces stress immensely. Burns fat, helps your mood and energy, helps your posture. It's anti-aging and it boosts your metabolism. So all the efforts you're making in changing your food intake is going to help be boosted in that metabolism when you're exercising. Here's some different types of exercises, cardiovascular and aerobic, but please do not ignore the weight and resistance training. That is actually the most important. And the, really, you should be balancing them a little bit. You know, not just always doing aerobic or always doing weightlifting. It's a combo of them so that you're getting good cardiovascular effects, but you're also getting weight training. And we all need to be stretching to keep every, you know, all our joints and everything healthy. It does, where do you start? Because I'll have people like, I'm scared to go to the gym. I'm whatever. You don't have to go to a gym. Things called YouTube. You can go online. There are all kinds of exercises you can download online. Right now, the weather is nice. Go out for a walk. Grab a friend. I do have some workout guides on, on my website. It's stepintotls.com. There's resources there and there's a fitness guide. Um, if you just would prefer to email me, I can send you that as well. But there's a fitness guide for, you know, for beginners, if you'd like it that way. But there's, it's never been easier actually to get information to exercise. The thing is, you just have to start. As we say, you know, and I think that people get overwhelmed. Well, I can't fit in three days a week of training sessions, or I don't have two hours and 30 minutes a week. That's why I probably shouldn't have put the slide up here. Don't worry about that. The thing is, just do something. Move your mass get off the couch, get away from your computer, do something. Something is better than nothing. Don't worry about keeping up with the person who's, you know, going to the gym seven days a week or running marathons or running triathlons. It doesn't matter. Do something is better than nothing and do a little bit more tomorrow than you did yesterday. That's what you should focus on. And so is nutrition and exercise enough? I, I wish it was. I, I wish it was, but it has unfortunately changed. That stress, smoking, alcohol, dietary choices, sun exposure, pollution, things that we don't even have control over, pharmaceutical medications, everything, and even exercise. Exercise is a fabulous way to stay healthy. However, it does deplete the supplements from our body. So there's things that we have to do. And just know that when you read a label, that when it says the RDAs, the RDAs are only, that's for minimum health. It's not for optimal wellness. It's the minimum amount you need to avoid a disease. Nobody I know of wants to just be minimally avoiding a disease. You want optimal wellness. We're not looking to just prevent rickets. When we want to have a vitamin D, we want optimal wellness with a good vitamin D level. Foods also are not as nutritious as they used to be. Fruits and vegetables are 59% less nutritious than they used to be. So what used to be considered a luxury as supplementation is now a necessity. The real world has caught up to our health. We eat more unhealthy foods. Um, and that's if we eat at all, if we remember to eat. Our lives are filled with more stress, whether from work or at home. Our environment from the air we breathe to the ground we sow is more toxic than ever. Supplementation is essential. The question I get is all the time is, where do I start? Now, granted, it can be customized to each person. Nowhere am I saying run out to the store or come to my clinic and purchase all of nine of these. That's not what I'm saying. Every, and we can, because everybody's needs are a little bit different. And that's what, what I do is I do custom wellness, you know, um, how I, I'll talk with you, look at your goals, your history, and decide what is best for you. But as a whole, 
And it really kind of goes from top to bottom. If you were looking at what are the most important nutrients, we call it the essential nine. The top three are actually the must haves, an omega, a good antioxidant and a multivitamin, must have. I have to tell you though, the next three are super, super important. B complex, vitamin D3 and magnesium. I highly recommend those. Also adding in fiber, probiotics, and CoQ10. And again, nowhere am I saying to go do that, but this is a good place to start. My top recommendations that I work with on a daily basis for people are omegas and antioxidants, vitamin D, and magnesium. Those are absolutely a must. Right after that is B-complex and then going to the rest, but that's for the clients that I see. So I'm going to go through a couple of these, the, some of the important, so omega fatty adds, you know, fish oil. So if you eat a lot of salmon, mackerel, and all these things, we're great. But for God's sake, we live in Bismarck, North Dakota. I, I, you know, how much mackerel and tuna, canned tuna and shrimp and pollock and cod do we have here? We don't. And the thing is, a lot of those things, um, you have to be careful also because the bigger fish have mercury in them. So you have to be careful. So the thing is with omegas, the benefits, there are tons of studies out there on mental health, ADD, ADHD, working with the military with PTSD. You know, someone who's been deployed, um, they absolutely should be coming back and be on omegas and actually curcumin, which is an antioxidant because it detoxifies at the cellular level. It's a must have. There are many studies on that. And so omegas bring down the inflammation in the body. The CRP or the C-reactive protein is an, is an inflammation marker, helps with joint fluidity, eye fluidity, everything. But a big one is depression and anxiety, which is what we're dealing with. ADD, HD, and children, all of these things that can be beneficial. Omegas are a very powerful thing to have. Next one, this is actually one of my top ones. Like I, I cannot go without an antioxidant every day, which is how my wellness journey started um, because I did have a lot of pain and inflammation. I had no idea antioxidants existed and I had no idea what they did that they bring down inflammation in the body, which therefore can decrease pain. Well, I work with a lot of people in pain and I did have a lot of pain. So who knew there were other options to bring down inflammation and therefore pain? What antioxidants do is when you cut an apple and you know how when it starts to brown, that is oxidation. We want to prevent that from happening internally because the reality is we are rusting from the inside out. That's just part of our aging. I know it's kind of not nice to think about, what ways to eat and get good antioxidants. You can do five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day in these areas. But I mean, just the reality is you'd have to eat bushels of blueberries in a day. So I want you to make a good effort, but the reality is we could never get enough antioxidants if we wanted to in our diet. These are some top antioxidants here. Um, some big ones being astaxanthin, vitamin C, vitamin E, CoQ10, curcumin is the one that I just mes messaged mentioned with um, like PTSD, et cetera, things like that, curcumin and omegas. The top one that I use personally and in my clinic is, is, the, is the pycnogenal and the OPCs. Those are the number one ones that I personally use in my office for all the antioxidant benefits. I work a lot with pain and inflammation and just detoxification at the cellular level. There's many other options that just the OPC and the pycnogenal, the ones that I use the most in my office. Um, also a good multivitamin because there is no substitute for a healthy, well-balanced diet. Absolutely not. If you can get all your nutrients in food, please do it. However, in today's fast paced lifestyle, is it important enough to get the food that we need or the nutrients we need because only 12% of adults meet the daily fruit intake and only 9% of adults meet the daily vegetable intake. And I'm telling you the vegetable intake is low because I run classes and they journal and send them to me. Getting people to eat vegetables is almost next to impossible. The World Health Organization says that nutrition is the foundation for health and development. So with kids, you know, with, um, with kids, mental health, physical health, everything, that if we're not giving them a good solid base of nutrients, how are they going to be healthy? I can tell you when people come to me and they join a, a, like a weight loss or a wellness class, sometimes they'll take some supplementation home with them first, generally being a multivitamin, an antioxidant, a B-complex. By the time we get to the class, they might have lost 10 pounds already just because they are getting better nutrients in. 
Another big one is B supplements, very huge. It helps with keeping your weight in check because it helps you process your carbs. It's, it's what a nutrient that's needed for carbs. It's very big for stress. If you have someone who's very stressed out, they, you know, anxiety is a happening and there's a lot of other benefits, but this is a big stress one because it, it helps. And you can take this multiple times a day. I, I actually recommend people use a, a not just go get like B5 or B6, but get the combo of Bs because you need to be complex. They all work synergistically. And also, um, I also, let's just say, I also work with one that has methylated and I won't have time to go into that, but not all of us can process all the B supplements, specifically the folate, because it we have methylation issues. So you, over 60% of the population has that issue. So you need an activated B complex. So just remember when you're looking for a B supplement, I would get an activated one. Um, and like I said, big one here is there's a lot of things that B supplements, but confusion, irritability, stress, crabbiness, things like that. Very, very big. Also, this is very big for people with headaches. I'll give you a little regimen at the end for headaches. Vitamin D, super important. I don't care how sunny it is, we're not getting enough. It doesn't matter because like, you should be wearing sunscreen, which means you're not getting enough. People are not getting enough. Another blessing of last year was that the importance of vitamin D was shared um, across the world. I would say how, how important it is for immune health. Vitamin D, I want when you get your level tested, if you get it tested, know that your level needs to be 60 to 80 for optimal wellness. If the nurse calls you and says, hey, Carol, your vitamin D level looks good. I want you to say, what's my number? Don't just say, okay, thanks and hang up. You need to know your number because 30 is considered normal in the clinic. That's what I would have called you with 10 years ago and told you normal. That's to prevent rickets, not for optimal wellness. And the closer you get to 60s and 80s, the, more, the better you're gonna feel. And I can see it directly in people when their vitamin D level comes up. So that's very important. Um, another one is magnesium. I literally cannot live without this on a day. Reason being sleep issues and head discomfort. Um, if you have issues with migraine headaches, tension headaches, you need magnesium. I used to have migraine headaches probably three days a week. 10 years ago, I probably have one a year now. Um, I was the chronic migraine person and I used to treat the chronic migraine person in the ER. I did not know this before. And when I did realize it, and I know the ER is not the setting for it. I understand that. That's why I want to educate people separately so you can empower your own health. But magnesium is super important for head discomfort, muscle tension. More people are having leg cramps this last year than I've ever had people complain to me before because stress depletes magnesium. We're dehydrated. All these things are increasing our um, leg, restless leg and cr um, cramping. It's very beneficial for sleep quality. It's, it's not on here, but it's um, magnesium is also beneficial for constipation. Our GI system slows down when we're stressed. So if you're looking for something that helps with head, sleep, restless leg, um, constipation, mood, this might be your number one thing to start is with magnesium. So that's what we call the essential nine. I work with Dr. Deidre Mason, a naturopath. With this, um, these are the supplements that I have in my office. If you have questions on how to understand what are the better supplementation, let me know. We can talk about that. And so coming into the end here, stress. I wish I could say our stress was going to go away, but it's not, unfortunately. We do have to learn how to adapt to stress. Um, it's, it's just what we have to do. I wish there was an easier way. And again, I wish I had a magic wand and a magic pill, but I don't. We do have to learn tools to help take care of ourselves, to better be able to manage stress and promote health for ourselves. Number one is you have to take care of your body because bottom line, it's the only place you have to live in. We have to. There's nothing we can do other than we have to focus on how we take care of ourselves. Attitude's always going to be a, a good thing. Having a good positive attitude's always going to be a good thing. You know, you've got the people that say the glass is half full, the glass is half empty. The other day I heard someone say, someone said, if the glass is half full, put it in a smaller cup. So the glass is full then. You know, it's all about perception. This was one of the things I saw a couple of years ago. And as a nurse practitioner in the emergency room, I've seen. <laughs> I've seen the little yellow cup before, but you're like, who do you know? I'm half full. I'm half empty. 
I think this last year I've seen a lot of people saying, I think this is, you know what? So, you know, where do you fall on that? Honestly, you know, I, things can really be difficult sometimes, but you know, be the person who puts sunshine in someone's day. We know the energy suckers and we know the people who are sunshine. Be that sunshine because you, you're you gonna make a difference in someone else's day and hope that someone will give you that sunshine on the days that you need it as well. Laughter is always great medicine too. Another great thing I tell my class, your pants won't get too tight if you don't wear any. The reality is during COVID, when we were locked down, a lot of people weren't wearing pants on, on Zoom calls and then they got up and walked away. It's a real thing, but you know, laughter is, laughter is the best medicine. We've heard that for a long time. Take a break from the news. I'm gonna tell you, I, I, I watch the news, stress level goes up. These studies have been done. I, I don't know what to say. It doesn't matter what your beliefs are, whatever it is. The thing is, it is part of self-care to stay away from social media news and the negativity that can come with that. I wish I could resolve all that, but I can't. You just got to turn it off. Mindful breathing, you know, meditation. There's meditation apps you can download for free. They're on Spotify. They're on things. Do some meditation. Um, one of my nurse practitioner friends recommends meditation all the time. She's always lecturing me on meditation. Um, I do better by going to body pump and exercising. Um, that's how I release my stress, but meditation is very important. So just a review of some stress management strategies. Take a break. Exercise. And that includes a sex because the reality is sex has gone down in the last year because our stress has gone up. But, you know, connect with your partner. Smile and laugh. Get social support. Meditate. Learn to say no. You don't have to be the person who does everything. Say no. Eat well. Take care of your body. Take your vitamins. Drink lots of water. Get sleep. Make time for fun and relaxation. Set realistic expectations and ask for help. I want you to remember to ask for help. It is okay to go to counseling. That's why counselors are there. There is nothing wrong with talking with somebody to help manage the stress that we are under. Eat well and take your vitamins. Here's just a little overview. If you're looking, here's a screenshot you can do. If you're looking for stress support, B vitamins are great. If you're looking for relaxation or sleep, magnesium or L-tryptophan. Physical stress, antioxidants, which would be like OPC, pycnogenol, curcumin that I talked about, vitamin C and omegas, oxidative stress, again, vitamin C and antioxidants. So just a little quick on there. Oh, hang on a second. And again, I'm going to just say it again here is make, asking for help. I just want you to know that because this was my family now two weeks ago. I have to say from the first picture I showed you to this picture, three of us in this picture have now gone to counseling because we asked for help. There's been a lot of food management. There's been a lot of adjustment of supplements. There's been a lot of medical visits from the stress that we had last year. And don't forget to take time away with the people most important. My husband booked this trip last minute for my three kids and my new son-in-law because we needed time away at the end of May. And I'm so happy we did it because there's never, there's never going to be the perfect time to go take vacation. And honestly, there's never a good time. It's always a good time to make vacation, but you have to, you know, focus on all those. I'm very thankful my husband did that because we do feel much healthier than we did a year ago by taking that time away. Healthy living, all of this, you know, the thing is, it's going to start with you. I wish everybody in the world was going to be healthy, but sometimes you just have to look at yourself as how can it best work with me? How can I be healthy and help those around me be healthy? So thank you so much for your information. Um, here is my card. If anybody has any questions, you can definitely email or text me for a free consult or anything that I have a, um, that I talked about. Um, if there's time for questions, I know I got one done early. Um, is there anything that I can answer there, Kylie? Yes, we do have a few questions. Okay. Um, this one's kind of a lengthy one. Um, I'm not sure how to word this. So here it goes. The country environment is not exactly a friendly one. The news is horrible to watch. People are attacking others, labeling others, and making it downright scary to live in a way we were used to and now are afraid. It has become so easy to just go to work, go home, and not socialize at all except for church. How do you help people who have become hermits, quote unquote hermits, and are living in fear when they did not before? And not just from COVID, but how volatile the country has become. 
It does not matter what ethnicity a person is. I'm seeing it with many different people with different cultures and backgrounds. I wish I had the perfect answer for that because I have some in my family directly with that exact same scenario. The thing is in one simple thing was if, so if you're talking about for yourself, try to implement the things I talked about. If it's someone else, just try the best to reach out to them, whether it's just every other day, sending them a text, you know, inviting them to things, keeping things smaller, um, not inviting them maybe out to the ground, round to the bar, but maybe something at their house, your house or backyard where there's fewer people. Um, get to get, ask them to go for a walk privately like that. I, I wish I had the best answer um, it, because I, it's everywhere and it's heartbreaking. And yes, it's such a volatile world. So, but by reaching out, what I can say is the power of a simple text message to somebody, not going to get emotional, but I can tell you can make a world of difference and you may never know it. Because I went through that last year and what you think might just be, well, I just sent him a text with a little bitmoji of a, you know, a little smiling face. And that might be exactly what they needed. So those little acts of kindness, um, virtually can be very helpful um, and maybe like as something simple as asking them just to go for a walk with you. Um, Great question. Does plant-based protein have the same effect? Uh, as um, in, uh, yes, plant-based protein is what fabulous. Yes. You, you might have to eat a couple different ones of plant-based to get a complete protein, but yes, plant-based, if you're talking about a shake, plant-based shakes would be a complete protein. Um, but with plants, like I'm going to say, um, oh, the different, the quinoa is a plant-based that's, that is a complete protein. But if you're like picking and choosing a couple of them, you might have to do a couple together to get a complete protein, but you might just be able to Google that. I mean, I do have the information myself, but I won't be able to share it all verbally, but yes, plant, plant-based proteins are, are wonderful proteins. Yes. And is almond milk okay to drink? Almond milk is a fabulous option to drink, but what you need to do is make sure you get the sugar-free one. Do not buy the regular one because there's like 22 grams of sugar added to it. That is, almond milk is great for people who are lactose intolerant, but marketing has led people to believe that almond milk is so much better than milk. Not necessarily, there's dairy not in it, but if you're adding 22 grams of sugar to it, it's not healthy anymore. So absolutely almond, flax, soy, you know, um, oat milk are all fabulous. Just get the sugar-free one. How has, you guys. how has the suicidal rate changed as far as numbers? And is there an age group that has been affected more than others? Yeah. I actually took that slide out and I wish I wouldn't have taken that slide out. I can't give you the exact statistics. I had them from Val Myers. Could Val's, Val Myers gets called on the suicides, especially in the younger age. Um, and so I took that out. It, yes, it has gone up um, and it's in the teenage age. Yes, it, it's in the teenage, in the, in the low 20s age. Um, it's, it's weekly happening here now. Um, it's also more prevalent in the Native American population and in the um, pride or gay lesbian com, um, of, the, of the youth. But yes, it has gone up. And if you have any questions on that, let me know. We can absolutely connect with Val Myers. She is very knowledgeable on that. I just took that slide out with all the stats in it, though. Um, do it's a real, I just want to say it's a real thing out there, you guys. For people who don't know, I mean, I just happen to be in the world where I know it, but if it's a real thing that's happening right now. And she works a lot with food nutrition, it's nutrient deficiencies leading to or contributing then to the stress that we have that is leading to suicide. What should we look for in a person and how should we reach out with offending, without offending them? That's oh, kind of a two part question. Yeah, <laughs> I, that is, I, I, I know, and I agree. And actually I just, if I find it, I will send it to you. I actually just saw like, there's a continuing education course on how, how to do this. Like they have health provider courses now for some of these things that even just education courses. Um, someone just the other day put, and it was on social media, but it was on a, like a private group. And it literally was like, the question was asked, if I saw somebody that appeared like they need help for the reasons you guys just said, they're hiding out at home, there's no social happening, all these things, it was literally split 50-50 down the middle. 
what someone said, absolutely, you should contact them. The other 50% said, no, you should not contact them. I, I, the world is split. You will never go wrong by contacting someone. Um, maybe it's not gonna be by a phone call because people will easily not answer the phone, but sending them, I, I don't know why, it, because, it, because I work with it a lot, is just sending them a text with a positive entity. Um, one thing that my, it was another nurse practitioner friend and I, last year a lot, we talked about, if you've ever seen Pooh and Piglet and Piglet was like always there for Pooh, there was great little bitmojis or great little, what do they call them? Gifts or whatever about Pooh just, be, or Piglet just being there without having to say a word. And I know my girlfriend sent me that many times because sometimes you don't need words. Sometimes just you letting someone know that you are there, you care, and that you thought of them will make a world of difference, um, if that helps at all. Um, there's a couple left. Um, do things like isometrics count as extra exercise? Like I do leg lifts that I learned from Jane Fonda. Absolutely, go Jane Fonda. Abs absolutely, that sound counts as exercise, yes. And do you agree with drinking water that has a better pH balance? Yeah, I mean, yes, I, I think some of it is marketing. I'm not going to, I will not disagree. However, I do work a lot with the pH balance of your body. So I actually, when I do wellness events, I have people test their pH. And if your pH is too acidic, um, the more acidic your body is, the closer to death you are. <laughs> so if you're taking in waters that have a better pH, that is great. But it also, you know, if you're not eating vegetables, help improve your, improve your pH of your body. Caffeine decreases the, the acidity of your body. So, you know, if you're drinking a lot of pH water, but you're drinking, you know, two pots of coffee, not eating any fruits and vegetables, you're, you're not really getting anywhere, but as part of a healthy lifestyle, absolutely, it's not going to be a bad thing. All right, that wraps up the questions. Oh, God, so wonderful. So thank you so much, Julie, for taking time out and presenting to our group. Absolutely. Thank you for asking me. Yes, absolutely. So again, anyone, um, we'll send out the survey here shortly. If you can please fill that out and give any feedback, that would be great. Um, also, Julie, is there any way, will you, are you willing to share your PowerPoint? with me or uh, I send I, it? I can, yeah. Okay, we had a few requests for that. So oh, sure. yeah. once I get the PowerPoint, I will, um, we'll get it sent out. Marilyn will send okay. it out to the group. Uh, okay, sounds fabulous. And then I think that's a wrap for today. Um, okay. Hopefully see all of you um, next week for our part two of our uh, refugee settlement program presentation and hope you have a great day. So thanks again for attending everybody. Thanks again, Julie. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.